Hello, my love. So when I joined Bezel about six or seven months back, I started working on a brand new tool called the Body Rig. Essentially, it's the digital canvas for the human body within XR. It is my first major project at Bezel, so it's pretty near and dear to my heart. And within this tutorial, we're going to learn everything about the anatomy of the Body Rig, how to use colliders, how to use behaviors, and I will even show you a couple of my early experiments while building this product. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, let me know with a like, subscribe, join the Discord down below. And um, let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are in a brand new scene. And to dive into a rig and explain it a little bit, um, let's start off by going up here to objects, go all the way down here. It says human rig, or else you can type rig. And I'm just gonna be placing it at zero. And as you see right now, we have a little guy here. Essentially what this rig is, it's an embodiment of the human body for us to control and build upon. And what do I mean by that? Well, to tell that tale, let's dive into the anatomy. So if I look at body rig one up here, I'm gonna open it up. As you see, we have a head. And if we open the head, we have body rig camera, and this will be the primary camera we start the scene with. So if I exit out of here, and if I go to start view, it says, body rig camera. So it's going to automatically default to that. So when you put on your headset, you will see through this camera. The next thing we have here is the left hand and the right hand. And if we look at all these properties like the head, we're going to see behaviors, colliders, and we have transform and layer opacity. Now we're going to have an update suit on the side panel. So some of these things may not show up here. Don't worry, you can't really control them anyway. So if we make our way down and we see left hand, we will also see here HMD input quest Two, quest pro hands and these are just the input devices for now and it will also have behaviors and colliders now let's go to the rig real quick and we will then see the ability to change the height so right now i'm around 1.6 meters if i bring i can bring that down to 1.4 i can bring that up to two meters and this will change the height of your avatar so to speak within a headset so i'm just going to bring it keep it at 1.6 Next thing is, is that we have the HMD um, input. So basically, this is just going to show you in the editor what controller that you could be using. Now, when you go into headset, it will automatically pair you with the right controllers, regardless if they are listed here or not. But these are just here for preview. So if I click Quest Pro, you will see these Quest Pro controllers. If I click hands, you will see these hand controllers. Now, I am going to keep them on hands. And as you see right now, these hands are positioned in a very specific way. Um, and we will talk about that here in a second. But essentially, you can design on these hands, you can design on the head. So let's jump out real quick. Okay, so we have our human rig. So let's talk about parenting objects to your human rig. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a sphere. So if I hit S, if I hit space, and I'm just going to double click on the ground here. We have a create a sphere and I'm going to change this sphere. Um, it's going to lock it here. Let's change this to um, I'm going to highlight everything 0 0.05 and we have this little baby sphere. Actually, let's do like 0.9. Let's go crazy. And this little sphere is going to be, I don't know, it could be a watch. It could be a animation. It could be a model, whatever you want. And so I'm going to take this sphere, I'm going to call it, you know, test, test ball. And I'm going to drag that to my left hand. And let's actually duplicate that. So um, I'm going to hit command or control D on the test ball. And let's put this on the right hand. And let's rename these again um, from, so I'm going to call this test ball um, right or test ball R. And then I'm going to call this test ball L. Cool. Okay, so as you see right here, the test ball is sitting um, below the hands, even though they are parented, and that's fine. So what I can do is if I go to the test ball, I can make sure it's selected and not the hand. I'm gonna hit zero, zero, zero. And as you see, the test ball is gonna go to the wrist or to the hand. This is where zero is. And let's do it again here for the right hand. So we're looking at these hands right now and this isn't absolutely perfect. Um, hands can get kind of complicated. So um, if I, for instance, um, go to this ball and if I move it forward, let's bring it up. 
and let's bring it right here. Perfect, I have this ball positioned in my hand. Now let's do the same for this one. There we go, perfect. So before we jump into headset, let's make sure our background is selected and let's change this to AR mode so we can see this in real time. And to make sure we don't see these white little alien hands, let's go back to the rig. And if you look right here, it says show system input in headset. So if I basically turn that off, what that's gonna do is that the hands or any controllers you use will be hidden. Okay, so with augmented reality set, and because we toggled off show system input and headset, let's try this out, okay? Cool. Okay, as you see here, I have both of these spheres attached to my hands. Um, and they're aligned perfectly. So if I move them around, they go with me. If I go up, they go up. If they go down, they go both down. If I move them side to side. And again, these can be whatever you want them to be. Okay, with that, let's dive into the next step, which is colliders. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna be using colliders here. Now, if you don't know what colliders are, don't worry. I have an entire video coming um, and when it comes out it will be up here so if you're interested about how to use them and all the basics that will be provided instead of getting too deep into the weeds what i essentially i want to do is that i want to create the ability for when this sphere enters this sphere i want them to change colors and when i pull my hands away i want them to change back to white now to make this a little bit easier I'm just gonna grab this sphere, add it to the hand because I can't select multiple things as of now, working on it. So with these two selected, I am gonna go over to colliders and I'm gonna switch both of them to sphere. And automatically the collider, which is essentially this invisible force field will appear around the object. And if you dive into here, you can say auto size. Now you can make these colliders as big as you want, as small as you want, but by default, they are set to auto size. So no matter how big these spheres get, this invisible force field that will detect if something enters or exits it will grow with it. But let's dive into the magic of this. So if I click this prototype area um, with both of these selected, you're gonna see this two state, which represents I have two things selected. And I'm gonna go over here to this green little dot. I'm gonna drag over and then it's gonna say state one. So now I'm gonna call this color. And then I'm gonna to go to this little arrow here, click this, and I'm gonna to go to pointer down, and I'm gonna say enter. Now, I haven't done anything yet with this color, so actually let's do that. Sorry for getting a little bit distracted. So I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna change um, the material for this in color to red. Let's go back. Now, I'm gonna change uh, this collider enters duration to zero, and what it's basically saying is that when a collider or this collider or this collider because they're both selected enters any other collider make the transition you can get complex with this but for right now this is all we need to know so then i'm going to go here i'm going to grab this dot and i'm going to change this to zero and then i'm going to change this to collider exit perfect so when these colliders exit each other they will go back to white so let's jump into headset and see how that looks, shall we? Okay, with our spheres here, let's bring them together and see if they collide. They do. So red, white, red, white. Now let's um, reach around and see if it triggers perfect. Now, as you can see here, it's super reactive. And when we get super, super close, they are extra precise. Perfect. Now with that out of the way, let's look at behavior, shall we? Okay, so that's really, really powerful, but we have one more thing up our sleeves and that is another behavior called follow. Um, now, I'm, again, I'm gonna make another video and it will pop up right here or in the description when it's done. But for right now, I just wanted to show you the power of what we can do, especially if you wanna work with panel. So let's discuss that real quick, shall we? So inside of this file, um, I have this test panel right here I created and I can take this panel and I can, um, you know, move it over here. I can have it, you know, either in front of you, you can put it wherever you want. And if we look at this panel real quick, this is just one PNG, but that's all we need right now. This could be group, this could be whatever you want. And what I can do with this test panel is I can go to this behavior and I'm gonna do follow. And this follow behavior is basically gonna follow what ever is in the scene that I want it to follow. So I'm gonna open up this rig real quick and with this crosshair, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna say head. Now nothing happened yet, which is fine. And I can see head right here. 
And if we basically hit this preview function, it is gonna go up to the head. Now, if I open this up, I'm gonna see rotate, X, Y, and Z, offset, and axis, and smooth. Now we're gonna get into these in another tutorial, but for right now, as you see, the panel is exactly one meter away. So let's say that you wanna prototype something that's a meter away, you can do that. If I wanna make it 1.5 meters away, it's 1.5 meters away. Now, if I grab this body rig, I can move it, and as you see, um, it is following me with this smooth interaction. Cool. Now, what happens if I want this panel to look at me? Well, you could rotate it, but there is a better way. So I'm gonna go back to the panel and I'm gonna add another behavior, which is look at. And because this preview's on, it's gonna keep on doing that every time I add something or I change the rotation here. So if you see this, it's just gonna keep bugging out, which is completely fine. I'm just gonna bring it back to zero. And then I am going to go to this look at, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And I'm gonna add head. Now, nothing happened here, and that's because the access of look at is not set properly. So if I go to test panel, I can go back here to behaviors, look at, and what I'm gonna do is I have all of these little parameters I can change, you know, tilt and axis, but I'm just gonna change the axis to Y. Now, as you see, it's looking at my head. Let's move around our, this real quick. And as you see, it is absolutely always looking at me, no matter where I go. Now this is insanely powerful. So if I walk around the room, if anything like that, it will be locked to my head. Now there's another thing we can also do um, just to cap off this tutorial, which is I'm gonna go to this panel right here and I'm just gonna add the final behavior we have, which again, we're gonna talk about all of these in detail, and I'm gonna hit freeze. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna basically first follow, then look at you, then freeze in position. So if I go to my body rig and if I move now, it is not gonna follow. If I rotate, it's not gonna do anything because what it's doing is that this is basically sampling all of these things and then freezing. So if I disable it, I can then move my body rig any way I want. Now the power of this is that when you have all of these things combined with different states, you can animate these on or off, on or off. So if for instance, you spawn a panel in front of you, you can have it there without it following your head or you can you know, kind of freeze follow position and keep look at if you want. This gets very complex, but it's also very, very powerful. So if I, for instance, hit shift O, and that turns off preview, again, shift O turns on all previews for every object, but if I should hit shift O, and if I decide to um, go to this panel, and if I change this unlit, and if I just change this to red, or if I change anything within this group, and if I hit shift O again, it will automatically stay there. So you can lay out different components, you can do whatever you want, no matter where they are, and you can parent them with these behaviors to your rig. Okay, before I sign off, I just wanna show you some really cool examples of what you can do. So it gives you a little bit of inspiration. So let's look at those real quick. Okay, let's start this one off with Beat Saver. Now this is a relatively easy thing to do. And as you see, there's no colliders on the boxes, but if you attach them, you could have the boxes explode when you hit them. The only thing you need is a couple of models of lightsabers in your hands, throw all these boxes within a group and move it, and there you go. Okay, on to the next one. Now, keeping with the game theme, here's some whack-a-mole. As you see, we have two mallets attached to our hands. We have a bunch of colliders on each button, so every time we hit it, um, we're gonna have the balloons expand, and we have this nice little text trick. Again, super easy, using a skybox here. Just something you can do. Okay, let's look at some things having to do with UI, shall we? Okay, this pie menu was a really early exploration I did while building the body rig, and it is really, really nifty because this menu is looking at my head at all times. It's really, really easy to do with this little hand collider. And if you look in templates, I have that already built out for you, so you should check that out as well. Okay, on to the final demo. Okay, to finish things off, I wanna show you what you can do with the mixture of hands, animation, and colliders. So as you see, I can spawn this um, fire from in my hand. And with the other hand, which has a collider on it, I then can then stomp it out. As you see, it's gone. Okay, now this is relatively easy to do. And with my hand template, you should be able to complete this between one to five minutes. Awesome, let's jump back in the bezel so I can say my goodbyes.
Okay, so that is the human rig. Now I built this thing for you guys to make it as simple as possible to experiment with controlling the human body in XR. So I hope you enjoy it. Now, if you like this kind of content, let me know with a like, subscribe, and I'm super excited to see what you guys build. So please join the discords down below. And until next time, everyone take care and plus minus.